Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, November 3rd to Saturday, November 9th. So last week we wrapped up October. Of course, we just wrapped up October because today is the very first day of November. And of course, we did it in divinely scripted fashion with that beautiful transition from the moon in the Libra energy that gave us the throwback to eclipse season, shifting into Scorpio energy, creating that dark phase of the moon for Halloween. And of course, Halloween is a very potent energy portal. It kind of ushers us into November, which is a very transformative month. And of course, we got a lot going on because if you're with me here, November 1st, live in the chat here Friday evening, first of all, thank you for being here. Secondly, we just had the new moon in Scorpio energy pop off early this morning. And we still have one astro event that we have to kind of see through in order to wrap up the last week of energy, which of course, tomorrow, Mercury moving out of the Scorpio energy, moving into Sagittarius. So once we kind of get that out of the way, this week, all we really have going on is Mars shifting out of Cancer energy to Leo energy, which is no small energy shift. That's definitely going to be felt. But then after that, we're kind of sitting in a holding pattern, if you will, until the ninth, when we have our first quarter moon popping off in Aquarius energy. So before I jump into all of the details, all of the things on my mind, all the rants and raves that I'm probably going to go on here, I just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping the beautiful emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, both as free members and as paid members. And I also want to thank those of you that have continued to show your love and support by donating donating to help support this channel. Susie Q, I'm talking to you. Thank you so much for that love and support. I want to talk about YouTube for a second because as you know, I take an opportunity pretty much every Friday in this Ascension forecast to let you guys know what YouTube is actually doing to me. So last week, I talked about the changes that I was making to my YouTube channel. Again, following all the gurus, following all of the professionals that did an audit on my channel, told me what to do, told me what to change, told me what to, you know, try. And I have been faithfully going through all of those adjustments. And let me tell you, YouTube effing hates me. Why do I say that? Well, because I've lost 700 views over this last week. I have stayed at... 5505 subscribers now for approximately two weeks. And what I mean by that is I wake up one day, I'm, you know, I've lost 10. And then I gain two that day to the next day, I get the 10 back, then I get, you know, three additional subscribers, then I lose them all. I've been at 5505 for God knows how long. And it is honestly, the, I, I just do not understand the algorithm, how everybody else on YouTube that makes content to tell other channels how to get views, how to get subscribers, how to increase their, you know, ad, let's call it monetization. Um, I'm following all that and it is doing the absolute opposite to my channel. And so one of the things that one of the uh, beautiful people that kind of, you know, helping me out, sent me some information, sent me some things to try. They said, you know, to remove my shorts. So, you know, if you've been following me for any amount of time, I post the daily vibes every morning. It's something I've been doing now for like 15 something years. OK, that apparently has been hindering my channel. So I created a brand new YouTube channel specifically for those daily vibes. And I called it Energy Vibes 369. I have made posts on this particular channel to encourage people to subscribe. Over this last week, I've had nine subscribers. And out of 5,500 people that are supposed to be seeing my posts, supposed to be seeing my content here on this channel, Nine of them jumped over to my new channel. So something tells me that I shouldn't have connected the new channel with the old channel because for some reason YouTube hates me and they now want to hate me on my new channel as well. So I am going to ask, I know it's a pain in the butt. First of all, let's try a couple of things here. First of all, I would like for everyone to 
unsubscribe to this channel and then resubscribe to this channel and make sure that the notifications are on for all content, all posts, all interactions. And then what I would love is if y'all could jump over to the Energy Vibes 369 channel and give me a subscribe over there. Now that channel, because it's new, I can't share my, you know, long videos. I can't share, you know, the Ascension forecast and all this kind of stuff. I'm specifically going to keep that for my shorts and I'm going to start creating more content short form to kind of push people to watch the full episodes here on this channel. Now, I know this sounds boring and I thank you for sitting through it, but I really don't think that a lot of people know what creators are actually up against the the hoops that we have to jump through just to have our content seen by those that have chosen opted to want to see it. So it's absolute insanity over here trying new things. I am a Scorpio. I am a fixed sign. I do not, you know, take on to changes lightly. And to actually see that the changes that I've been making over the past week have actually hurt and harmed my channel. Defeat is not really the appropriate word, but that is definitely what I am feeling. So because of all of this kerfuffle, I have started posting all of these forecasts, all of my content back on Spotify and iTunes. So if you are more comfortable on those platforms, please find me over there. Subscribe to those particular, you know, guides, those platforms. Apparently Spotify has now opened it up so that I can do audio or video. I put a poll out there. If you're on Spotify, please, please just kind of hit the button. What do you prefer? Audio or video? I would be very curious to know. So I am trying pretty much everything. And for those of you that have been showing your love and support that have been, you know, complimenting me on the changes that I've made, especially in the video formats, the graphics that I've been using, the thumbnails. Thank you so freaking much, because it reassures me that a somebody's actually seeing the changes that I'm making and b that if y'all think that it's aesthetically pleasing, if you all think that it's really nice, then so should YouTube and you should, it should put me back in the algorithm. You would think let's keep our fingers crossed for that. It is the new moon in Scorpio. I am putting all of my energy and intentions to just be treated fairly here on these platforms. And that is my hope. That is my goal. That is my dream. So of course we're in a new month. If you haven't listened to November's energy forecast, I'm definitely going to recommend you do so. Again, I want to remind you, this is the second month that I have changed the way that I do the Zodiac forecast for each month. Now it is in written form, workbook form, and you can download those November energy guides specifically tailored for your Zodiac sign off of my website. Or if you're a Patreon member, you should be able to access, I think silver and gold tiers should be able to access those workbooks, all 12, if you want them as part of your package. So that is why I continue to push Patreon because that is the bang for your buck over there. There There's so much content to keep you ahead of the game, to keep you in alignment, that there's really no excuse to not be doing the work, to not be seeing the growth, to not be seeing yourself heal. So I'm definitely going to continue to encourage you to do all of the things. And of course, with this new moon in Scorpio that just popped off early here today, early this morning, there's a new moon in Scorpio moon guide that you should be completing. We're still very much in the new moon energy for the next couple of days to do those moon rituals to set your intentions for this next cycle. Transformation at its freaking finest. And because it's a new month, my booking calendar is now available to the public. Of course, it gets kind of, you know, revealed to my Patreon VIPs first and foremost. And so they have had a stab at kind of reserving their spots. Those spots go relatively quick. And because this is my birthday month, I am not working as much. So those spots are very, very limited. If you want to work with me in the month of November, definitely jump on and snag your spot. Okay, with all of the homework out of the way, I thank you so much for sitting through that. It is probably just as painful for you to listen to it as it is for me to talk about it. But again, I don't think that a whole lot of people realize what creators actually go through in order to actually have our content seen. And so, you know, a little bit boring, but at the same time, very relevant so that you understand why I'm making the changes, what's going on on my end, what I'm trying, the results that I'm getting. 
And of course, if you all have any more suggestions, which I don't know, honestly, I have a list from multiple professionals that have done an audit on my YouTube channel. I have some very clever people's clients, you know, supporters that have given their two cents. I have a very long list of things that I'm trying, things that I'm changing. If you want to add to that list, I'm sure, you know, I'm not saying that what you're going to suggest isn't on the list, but I have a pretty hefty list going. So, you know, especially if you're a content creator here on YouTube and you're going through the same thing, please drop me a comment below. Let me know what you're doing to change it, to try to get yourself seen by the people that have chosen to actually want to see your content. Okay, let's talk about the ascension symptoms. Well, first of all, pretty potent energy between yesterday and today. I know my head has been absolutely killing me. Mostly to do with A, the energy being very potent. B, there's a lot of solar flares popping off that are, you know, scheduled to hit us here in just a couple of days. And, you know, C, the whole vibe is changing. You know, new moon in Scorpio, dark phase of the moon, Mercury's at the final degrees of Scorpio energy that affects the headspace. We have this moving headache, this moving pressure in our heads, and it is definitely going to change as of tomorrow because then we all kind of morph into the ADHD squirrel. Why do I say that? Well, because Mercury's moving into Sagittarius. So yeah, it's going to give us a little bit more of an optimistic lens to look through, which is going to be a nice change. Um, it is going to give us a greater, grander picture, if you will, deeper meaning to why it is that we had to go through what it is that we've gone through. But we're just bouncing around from one thing to the next. It's really hard to kind of hold concentration and focus on one particular thing. And so the, the ADHD squirrel is the best way that I can summarize what our headspace is going to feel like. There's going to be too many windows open. Again, we don't know where the music is coming from. We're going to have some big ideas that are, you know, very excitable, but we're not going to be able to hold that train of thought, that focus, that concentration long enough to plan or strategize around it. You know, Mercury and Sag energy is very much the big picture. We're not so worried about the smaller details on how we're going to get there. We're just focusing in on the greater, grander vision that we actually want to manifest and make sure that we're holding an emotion, an excitable, happy, joyous emotion in order to match the vibration and frequency that we would imagine us feeling if we were able to manifest that particular end goal. So I suspect that as we move through the energy tomorrow, and again, uh, not that I want to give you like a, a super in-depth rundown of the energies here tomorrow, because there is, you know, an astral forecast for that. But like we have Mercury making a positive aspect with Mars and Pluto, the rulers over Scorpio season, the rulers over the Scorpio moon energy that we're still in before shifting into that Sagittarius energy, which I think is very interesting. And then, you know, on the third, that's when Mars, again, ruler over Scorpio season, shifting out of the Cancer energy into the Leo energy, but not before a direct opposition with Pluto, who of course is sitting at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. There's going to be oppositions, there's going to Venus, Again, Venus and Jupiter, they're going to be at odds with each other while Mars and Pluto are at odds with each other. Not to say that it's all going to be bad, 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 but there's a lot of tension here because, again, we're in Scorpio season where, you know, breaking points and boiling points have to happen in order for us to make major changes, major transformations. So that's kind of the name of the game here. Once we get into, you know, probably late the third, maybe early Monday morning, the 4th, that's when there's going to be a little sliver of the moon start appearing back in the sky. And that's when there's a little bit of an illumination. There's a little bit of clarity kind of peeking through on what it is that we have to do, what it is that we have to pursue. And then, you know, we have this beautiful energy because, you know, the moon is going to be moving into Sag energy, aligning with Mercury fresh in this Sag energy. The moon is going to be working its way through that Sag energy, aligning with Venus here on Monday. There's going to be a lot of positive aspects helping us to identify what we need to grow upon, what we need to heal, what we need to resolve, what we want to kind of pursue from here. And again, Scorpio season being all about desire, 
all about what it is that our heart truly wants for us and equally realizing the fears, the doubts, the insecurities preventing us from doing all of the things to go after what it is that we truly desire. Later this week, we're going to have an interaction between Venus and Mars, the masculine and feminine divine energies. And that's going to be a beautiful thing because, you know, they're both in fire signs and fire is creation. It's the spark, the fire, the flame that gives everything life. So we're definitely going to be in for some positives. There definitely are going to be some not so nice aspects as well, because again, we're going through a major growing pain. We are in a closure of a chapter on multiple different cycles with different planets. You know, think of all the retrograde planets right now. Think of all the uh, planets at the final degrees of the signs that they're currently in right now. This is a closure of a chapter of a karmic life lesson that, again, we're trying to put past us. And even though we're kind of hell bent, damn well and determined to start building towards the future, the only actions that we are actually taking right now, we're taking maybe a baby step in a new direction, but that's only because we've actually done the work to release a lot of the weight, the attachment, the restriction, the limitation that we've been feeling by getting rid of some of these older aspects that, of course, the old version of salt had built that Pluto for the next couple of weeks anyways, being in this final degree of Capricorn energy going to allow us to totally destroy, totally demolish. So, you know, the, the head pressure definitely coming on strong, I would say. And again, this moving headache worm definitely doesn't feel good. But when that ADHD squirrel kicks in, man, things are going to get overwhelming. So we do have to pace ourselves. We do have to, again, remind ourselves that the Sagittarius energy kind of has a new lease on life because it just went through the Scorpio energy of death endings and closures where a new truth is illuminated to us. And so, you know, we hit the ground running in that Sag energy, but we kind of take it a little bit too far. Again, Jupiter rules over the Sag energy. So the there is an extreme there. There is a magnification. There is an over exaggeration. And then we get humbly sobered, so, sobered up, let's call it a sobered reality check when we move into that Capricorn energy. And of course, that won't be for a while because Mercury's going to go retrograde at the end of this month. And if you've listened to the November energy forecast, you would know that we're going retrograde at 22 degrees in Sag which is a very interesting dynamic because we started 2024 off with Mercury coming out of his retrograde and going direct at 22 degrees in Sagittarius energy. So another throwback, another closing of a chapter. I want to talk about the pain and the aches, if you will, the growing pains that we're physically feeling in our physical body. So of course, you know, Scorpio season is the growing pains that we're going through and growing through in our soul and in our spirit, in our emotional realm, in our mental realm. It's very much the inner realm being. Uh, but that manifests in the physical form. And so, you know, a lot of this, because Mars and Pluto are involved and in their rulership here, there's a lot of pain in the lower back. There's a lot of rigidity, a lot of popping, a lot of cracking in that lower back. There's a lot of tension in the hip. Sciatica is coming online. A lot of bladder and bowel twitching problems, constipation, limitations, restrictions as well. And that pain, those aches are going to kind of stem down to our legs because again the legs connect with the earth we are a conduit for energy the earth's energy are changing our energy is changing there's going to be a little bit of an electric both resistance and attraction based on where it is that we're at doing the transformative work within ourselves but you know we hold fear in our knees we hold a lot of tension in our lower extremities. We get cold feet when we're looking to make moves and especially making growth and progress. And, you know, the growing pains that we are going to be feeling in our calves, in our thighs, um, it's just it's, it's a grounding energy because, you know, the change, the transformation taking place in our soul and our spirit, our frequency, our resonance. It is overlapping the physical form, but our physical form is still very much anchored into that old vibration, that old frequency. Thus, why all of these energy shifts, all of these solar flares popping off, they really kind of beat us up and, and beat us down at the same time because the physical body holds on to residual energy. This is why emotion, pain, trauma gets trapped in the physical form. 
we emotionally could be over it. We could have worked our way through it. Mentally, we could have reframed the pain and the trauma, but it gets trapped in the physical form. This is why, you know, EFT tapping, this is why somatic therapies, this is why yoga, this is why massage work, body work is so important because we do have to, you know, release the energy trap most specifically in, you know, the connective tissue of our body that holds all the nerve endings, it holds all the neural pathways, it holds all the information, all the data packets. This is what we have to be releasing. And so we're going through a major change and transformation in our soul and our spirit. And we're going to feel the energetic blockages in our physical form. The bathroom issues, I know I talked about it last week. Um, you know, where we were literally like holding on to shit, literally and figuratively. Um, I feel like because the new moon, like we're sitting in this energy, there is like a clean space and a clean slate that we're being provided with. So you may have the floodgates kind of open on both ends, so to speak, to get whatever toxicity that you're still holding on to out of you. But the bladder issue is going to be like extreme. There's going to be a, an extreme sense of urgency, like you're going to pee your pants and you're going to run to the bathroom and you're going to just dribble like, oh, my goodness, why did I feel like I was going to pee my pants if nothing is happening here? And just kind of reminder, we're going through a detox, we're going through a purge, we're going through a cleansing period, the death, the endings, the closures that need to happen before a rebirth, a renewal of resurrection are very real. And in order to start something new, you have to have a clean space, a clean slate, and there's a lot of gunk that we've been holding on to. And so, you know, frequent bathroom trips, disappointing bathroom trips, let me also put that in there, um, probably going to be a heightened thing over the course of this next week as we, you know, adjust to these new energies, as we get empowered to make the changes and transformations that we've been hesitant in making. There's going to be a lot of fluctuation in the energy and therefore fluctuation in our physical bodies. I want to talk about our eyes. So we've been talking about how, you know, going through upgrades and going through, you know, growth and healing that we're able to kind of see things uh, from a different lens. Now, we were talking about eye issues. We were talking about eye rashes or gunk in the eye. And a lot of that is because there were things that were popping up in our awareness, either in the physical form or just, you know, in our inner realm that we really didn't want to see. And we had no choice but to see it. And until we acknowledge what it is that we're trying to turn a blind eye to, there's going to be eye issues. But here's the thing. This week, I feel like our eyes are going to be squinty, meaning everything is really bright. The change, the transformation that we're currently going through is, you know, altering our, I call it sensory system, which means that, you know, colors are a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more bright. The sun as wackadoodle as that is from day to day, that appears to be a little bit brighter. The Even on a cloudy day, um, it seems to be a little bit brighter. We're just kind of hypersensitive at this particular point because our eyes are adjusting to see the subtle energy realm as well. You know, Scorpio season is the bridge, the gap, if you will, between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. And we're definitely fine tuning and adjusting our sensory systems in order to pick up on the subtle energy that, you know, overlays our physical realm all the time. And it just feels like our eyes are going to be squinty. And I, I would say they're going to be a little bit watery too. And that's going to sting, especially if you've been having, you know, eye issues. It's like this dry, stingy, watery, squinting type of thing. And we're just really trying to see the forest past the trees. We're trying to focus on the positives through all of this gunk and junk that we're currently going through and trying to process. And so there is going to be some sort of visual changes, but I don't think we're seeing visual changes. I just think that it's the physicality of our eyes squinting to try and see through the bullshit, literally. Like that's what we're doing. We're just trying to see through the bullshit. Um, our face energy is changing as well. We're going through a major change, a major transformation, which energetically and, um, you know, frequency wise does alter the way that we appear. It does alter the way that we see ourselves. There are facial changes coming online. You may not recognize yourself for this next week until we're actually in a situation to grow and evolve and change and transform from this, you know, goo state. I kind of talked about the goo state that we're in. I'll, I'll, you know, I hate to be repetitive about a lot of this, but I think a lot of it does carry a lot of value. 
Scorpio season is the transition from the caterpillar to the butterfly and the new moon and Scorpio energy that we're currently sitting in here. Um, we're just in the darkness. We're in the pile of goo and anything that ever gets born, that ever gets created comes from darkness. Okay. The darkness was always here. The light is what has been kind of created and you need that darkness in order to appreciate the light. But we're in this damn dark cocoon, but we're just a pile of goo. We're no longer that caterpillar but we haven't built the structure of the butterfly as of yet. And so we're in this like mid metamorphosis, this mid transformation, this transfiguration where we're just a pile of goo. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know what's going to happen. And because of that, again, I've been really encouraging, you know, everyone to be okay with not knowing, you know, we have to have trust in ourselves. We have to have trust in the greater, grander plan of the cosmos and not knowing, although it really agitates the egoic programming, it, it kind of reaffirms the trust, the connection, the relationship that we've built with ourselves, we've built with the divine. And so we're in this pile of goo, we're in the darkness right now. And until we move into, like I previously mentioned, like late on the third, early on the fourth, when the little glimmer of the sliver of the moon starts reappearing in the sky, we're going to be in this pile of goo. And this pile of goo once we come out of it, our eyes are really going to sting from the brightness. We're really going to look different. You know, you don't go into the cocoon as the caterpillar and come out as the butterfly and look in the mirror and be like, oh, damn, there was no change at all. Like you're literally a new structured being. The butterfly is looking, you know, at itself in the mirror being like, man, look at what I did. I got wings now. I can fly. Right. But just as diamonds are formed, it comes with great pressure. It comes with a death process. It comes with the destruction process. That's what Scorpio season, the Scorpio new moon is all about. And we're currently all up in it. So when Mars, the god of war, moves into this Leo energy, heart and soul of the zodiac, there's going to be this overall kind of renovation in our mood and in our attitude. And there's going to be some very strong heart activations coming online. Now, heart activations, I'll just give you a rundown, could be, you know, literal physical pain in your chest, in your breathing, could be in your shoulder blades. It could be that your heart has a sporadic beat. It could be acid reflux. Whatever it is, there's a manifestation in the physical body to bring attention to our chest, our heart space. Leo energy is where we bring the authentic soul into our physical meat suits. And now there is this urgency to fully express this new authentic version of self out into the physical realm. Now, Mars, he really enjoys being in a fire energy. That's his natural dominant element. He rules over Aries wholeheartedly. He's a co-ruler to Scorpio energy. That's why it, it, we have an intensity, we have passion, we have desire that really gets kind of reignited in the Scorpio energy that is due to Mars. If Mars can't be in his rulership in Aries energy, I would say that the best place for him is this Leo energy, even over the Scorpio energy, because again, it's emotional, it's intuitive, he can't really take physical action, there's not really a passion, a spark, a fire, a flame kind of igniting him to move on and move forward in the Scorpio energy. Yeah, it's deep, it's intense, it's probing, it's a natural process that needs to happen. But I would say Mars really enjoys being in Leo energy. We want to put ourselves out there. We're moving from the introverted energy of cancer, holding on to dead horses and dead weight, the past, to like totally shedding our skin in typical Scorpio fashion to become extroverted. We're putting ourselves out there. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. The Leo energy is attention seeking. Not, well, it could be in a bad way, but not in a bad way. Like we just are coming out of our shell. Think of the crab, cancer energy. We just cracked our shell. And now we are rising up in the authentic version of self, in our heart space, in who it is that we actually are to pursue the things that our soul is calling us to pursue. And we have the boldness, the bravery, the courage that we've been lacking to do all of those things. Now, granted, it is going to be a very short window of opportunity because, again, Mars will be going retrograde in this Leo energy and backtracking into the Cancer energy. And we're going to kick 2025 off with, you know, this the same placements that we are kind of dealing with now, the same actions, choices, decisions. We're going to make a bunch of moves. We're going to go through a bunch of things from now until the beginning of 2025 
And then Mars is going to go direct. We're going to have to retrace our steps through the, I'm going to say, last three weeks and the next two weeks. So, you know, there's uh, a five week span there that we're going to have to revisit. And again, this is one of the major reasons why I encourage you to download the November energy guide for your zodiac sign so that you can go through the workbook and actually capture what is going on for you when Mars moves into this Leo energy. But the heart activations are going to be intense and the impulse the high urgency to want to make moves is going to be so overwhelming. And again, yeah, to a certain extent, I'm going to say that, you know, making some risky moves are beneficial, but those risky moves should really be a little bit more thought out, a little bit more well calculated than just spontaneous fly by the seat of your pants. Again, if it is, that's okay. You're going to make a mess for yourself, but you're going to have, you know, second chance to kind of clean that particular mess up at the beginning of the year when Mars is retracing his steps through these particular degrees. So the heart activations, again, all different ways that that could manifest, um, but different mood, different attitude. We just, we want to make some progress here. We want to move on. We want to move forward. It is the most beautiful energy, I think, that we could have throughout Scorpio season to get us hard aligned, to get us returned to what we are actually passionate about, what we truly desire, what we're willing to fight for. And we have the boldness and the confidence to actually go after it. So there is definitely going to be a lot of pressure in our chest, in our heart space, in our gut, right under our ribs, if you will, a little, I'm not going to call it bubble guts, but we're doing, we're doing a lot of burping. OK, we got to We got to get that air out of us. And we have a lot of energy that we need to be moving through that heart space in order to kind of process old topics and themes. Again, Scorpio energy, we have to reframe it. We have to restructure it. We have to alchemize it into something better. So I think last week, I think for the last couple of weeks, actually, we've been talking about, you know, rashes, oak breaks, pimples, acne, itchiness especially on the face. And because we are going through major changes and transformations that will be altering our overall appearance once the transformation is actually said and done, I think that we're still going to have a lot of issues with the face. I know myself, I don't know why, but myself, I have broken out in like this eczema allergy flare on my face. It is not cute, okay? Do not like it, do not enjoy it, do not recommend However, I also know that when we have these types of physical manifestations, it's trying to bring attention to something that we're going to great lengths to ignore. So, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to kind of verbal vomit what I'm choosing to ignore and what I have to do better in order to acknowledge and accept. Um, but I just want to kind of share with you that even though I know what's coming at us, even though I know the meaning behind it, even though I know what to do in order to fix it, heal it, resolve it, I'm a fixed sign. And I resist those changes, even though I know that they're the best changes that I need to make for myself. I resist that change at all costs. And so, you know, you want to talk about rolling or being dragged. I'm in my darkest days as I approach my birthday here. And, you know, dark days are not for the faint of heart. We're going through the dark night of the soul over here. And, you know, a lot of energy, a lot of emotion, a lot of past baggage is definitely rising to the surface of all of our awarenesses. But in my case, in, in, in my awareness so that I can resolve it before I get my solar return energy on my birthday. And so even if you're not a Scorpio, even if you don't have an upcoming birthday, we're still going through it. We're still experiencing similar things. And I feel like we have to pay special attention to our skin at this particular point in time, especially where our faces are concerned. Now, let's talk about the lips for a second. Our lips are going to be burning right off of our face once Mercury kind of moves into this Sag energy. And I feel like our throats are either going to be scratchy or they're going to be itchy, or they're going to be overly hot, like we're spitting fire, that Sag energy is a fire sign and has no filter. So we are just straight shooting verbal vomit, right? We're just we're just putting it out there. We're not we have no, no delivery method whatsoever. We're just we're just spitting truth. And although that's a good thing for many people, because we spent so long biting our tongue and choking on the truth. Um, 
it can be a little bit too much as well. We have to remind ourselves that Jupiter does rule over the Sag energy and everything is just a little bit extra. And we are definitely going to go to extremes with the Sag energy and we are going to feel that fire energy, that over-exaggerated state of needing to get things off of our chest. We're going to feel that in our lips and in our throat. Now, I want to talk about this um, Mars opposition to Pluto for a second. It is a big deal. We're not going to we're not going to bypass that. I did talk about it in the moon guide because it is an opposition that was very much affecting the overall life lessons and our ability to grow under this new moon in Scorpio. Um, but, you know, Mars and Pluto, the rulers over the Scorpio season going at it, they're kind of, you know, confronting each other. And it's not going to feel good until Mars kind of gets going and gets out of orb. And I feel like we have to kind of understand that Pluto, he wants us to wrap up the old. Mars wants us to pursue the new. We've been in a holding pattern. Nobody likes being put on pause or put on the bench, so to speak. But unfortunately for us, especially throughout the course of this week, it's very interesting. You know, it goes wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, with the back to back to back energy shifts and then nothing happens except for you know minor tweaks in our emotions in our headspace in order to support the major change and transformation that's going on through Scorpio season but we sit in nothingness we sit in this hole we sit on the bench for the majority of this upcoming week we just have to observe and not a whole lot of people like doing that and I'm going to put it this way the energy inside of us between our emotions and our thoughts we're going to be doing the cha-cha-cha Meaning the urgency, the impulse to want to make change, to want to make progress coming from Mars in this Leo energy, we're like all fired up. We're all hopped up. We're, we're overly, you know, just confident that if we can dream it, we can achieve it type of thing. And we have a hard time calming the ants in our pants. But the minute that we try to take action, the minute that we try to actually make some progress, we're going to hit challenges. We're going to hit blockages. We're going to hit obstacles in order for us to keep our ass sat down on that bench in observation mode. Pluto is going to make sure of that. Pluto is very, very, very hyper focused on us wrapping things up. We only have a couple of weeks left. Again, if you've listened to the November energy forecast, if you've downloaded your guide, you would know we are shifting power. Pluto is handing over power to Aquarius energy here on the 19th, which, you know, ironically enough or coincidentally enough, if you believe in those things, he literally waits till the final degrees of Scorpio season in his rulership in order for him to pass the baton from Capricorn energy to Aquarius energy. That is no joke. We're setting up in this Aquarius energy from now until 2044. That is no joke which means that we only have a couple of weeks left to actually totally destroy, demolish, and remove, release the aspects of the old world that we're not kind of wanting to continue, that we're not wanting to build upon, that we're not wanting to continue to strengthen. And so, you know, this is where the cha-cha-cha energy is coming in because the ants in the pants, Mars and Leo, wants to just, you know, do something, wants to see some progress, wants to be productive in a new path, in a new direction towards new goals. Pluto's like, nah, uh, uh you can't build a house on top of a house. You have to remove the old house and come, you know, down to the foundation before you can start fresh. And, you know, Mars doesn't even really want to be focused on the demolition process. Mars wants to be focused on the building process. And Pluto has no want, need or desire to even think of the building process. Pluto wants to bring the wrecking ball in and make sure that there are no remnants of this old house even visible to the eye by the time Pluto actually shifts energy into Aquarius. So we are going to be put on the side bench. We are going to be put in observer mode. It is not going to feel good. Many of us have zero patience, um, very limited energy most days. And when that energy comes and we're not able to use it, that frustrates us to all F. And so again, until we kind of get out of this week and Mars can kind of you know, move through the degrees, the earlier degrees of Leo and move out of this opposition with the 29th degree of, of Capricorn, we have to sit on the bench. We have to do the best that we can to tame and calm the ants in our pants. One thing that I think is going to be super, super good for us 
is that on the 9th, we're going to have the first quarter moon pop off and it's taking place in Aquarius energy. So the first quarter moon is a time of action and decision, um, especially based off of whatever it is that we're uncertain about as far as the new moon goes. So the new moon that we're currently in right now is the ending and the beginning, the ending of the old cycle, the beginning of the new cycle. But we still don't know what that means. We're going to be sitting with the options, with the opportunities, with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, with the if, ands and buts. We're going to be sitting on the bench with all of this energy bouncing around within us. And then when the first quarter moon pops off, that's going to be when we actually decide something. When we actually have a plan and a strategy or an idea on how to go about, you know, initiating the plan and strategy, that is when there's going to be an action point. Because again, the first quarter moon, there's a whole hell of a lot of illumination in the sky. And the beautiful thing is, is that Aquarius energy, when the moon is in Aquarius, it allows us to emotionally detach from our situation, from our circumstances in order to act as the observer. It's very visionary. And so we're operating from the highest form of our intellect with that Aquarius energy. And what that's going to do is, first of all, pluck us out of being so closely attached to the situations and circumstances that we're looking to fix, heal and resolve that we get to see it from a third party observation point of view. And then we get to see different options and opportunities that we wouldn't have seen if we were too close to it. And then we kind of get downloaded with a new level of awareness and consciousness that we are now going to integrate into our operating system. That is going to be a part of this Scorpio change, this transformation taking place in our soul space. And so I feel like, first of all, operating from the highest mind means that we're going to gain a whole hell of a lot of insight, which is going to work so much in our favor secondary to that the Aquarius energy allowing us to emotionally detach is going to be a nice jam especially seeing as we're in Scorpio energy and we're either feeling nothing or we're feeling everything and in some days in some minutes we're doing both we fluctuate back and forth and back and forth and back and forth again um the, I feel like the first quarter moon in Aquarius is essentially going to give us that green light go ahead to do something OK, maybe it's just one move. Maybe it's a couple of moves. Maybe it's just, you know, making the decision to make a move, whatever the case may be. Some sort of green light go ahead is coming at us towards the end of this week. And it's going to be a beautiful thing because, of course, the following week. And again, now the reason why I encourage you to kind of stay ahead of the game here, the following week, Venus is on the move. She moves into Capricorn energy. We're not messing around. We're really focused on our long term dreams, our long term desires, on our long term wants and needs, especially where our day to day life go, where money and relationships are concerned. Not to mention, we're moving into the full moon in Taurus that, of course, takes place just after Saturn goes direct. So there is a domino effect here to the energies. I'm a firm believer, like I, I can look at the energies and I see the events of the energies kind of one domino at a time. And I see how they're setting us up for breakthrough energy. This is the breakdown energy. I see in about a week's time, we're being set up for the breakthrough energy. Again, a good reminder to continue to hold the line, to continue to hold your space, to just stand where it is that you're at, stand in your power, do what you got to do to make the changes and the transformations in your inner realm that eventually will help you manifest the kind of change that you're looking for in your outer realm. It's all happening for us, okay? Nothing is happening to us because that would be victimhood mentality. Everything is happening for us. That is the best way to look at it. Even if there are some not so nice, not so favorable things happening, we have to understand that that is happening for us to free us, to liberate us, to set us free in so many different ways to actually get in alignment with this new version of self. So guys, I think that's all that I have to share for this week's Ascension Symptoms. Again, we are going to need a little bit of time to acclimate to this energy, to these life lessons, to these energy shifts, to this change, to this transformation. I feel like we are definitely going to have a different mood, a different attitude kind of take over us, especially once Mars moves into that Leo energy. But then, you know, to want to hit the ground running, but you're still on the bench, that's going to be a challenging, frustrating time. And so we all just have to do better and we all have to be better and we all have to appreciate the time in which we get to sit on the bench because when the whistle blows and we are asked to jump on that playing field, 
we are going to go very hard. Okay, we're going to go nonstop. It is going to be back to back to back to back to back to back to back energy and efforts. We're going to be begging for the ref to put us back on the bench and we're not going to be able to do that. So again, it's time to have the attitude of gratitude for the time that we are sitting on the bench, for the pauses, for the holding periods in which we're currently in. Act as the observer, do the work in your inner self so that when that green light goes ahead and lets us know that we can make moves, that we are ready to execute on the plan, on the strategy that we're currently piecing together. So I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for sharing your time, your energy, your space, not only with me, but with everybody else here in this beautiful community. I thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. Even though YouTube doesn't want you to love and support me, I thank you for continuing to do so. And I thank you for tuning in, not just for me, but tuning in for yourself. I thank you so much for your presence here this evening and if you're not live in the chat, thank you for catching the replay. I wish you the most transformative month that November is definitely offering us. I encourage you to boss up and do the work. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.